everybody. I'm afraid this is yet another video about the 7293 dual board. Now, the reason I've been going on about this for such a long time now, over so many videos, is because I think it's probably one of the most underrated amplifiers you can get. And I've mentioned on previous videos that the 7293 um, dual board, as it stands out of the box, offers amazing results. And I've showed previously also that a couple of other modifications that can make it even better. Well, today I'm going to hopefully finish the subject by showing you another modification that you can do and I'm going to show you some spice simulations of what the performance is and I'm also going to show you what the square waves look like and the real results and how closely they follow the spice simulations. The main issue is, well no it's not an issue, the main point is you will not have seen square waves as good as this on my channel and probably any other channel. This amplifier, not only does it sound good, it measures outstandingly so. And if you haven't, well I was going to say built one, but unfortunately you can't build it. But if you haven't already purchased these boards, and I have to say again, I don't make any money out of purchasing you purchasing these boards. I suspect the company is rather pleased with me, but I don't make any money. So if I tell you it's good, it's good because A, I've heard it and others on my channel have also heard it. And I'm going to prove it on the test bench. If you don't build one of these, or, or use one of these boards in your amplifier project, you are missing out a great deal. Just before we get started, again, I have to thank my good friend Ron, who has done the spice simulations for us all. So thanks, Ron. I'm sure everybody, but especially me, appreciates your efforts. Thank you very much. Let's look at some of the modifications in more detail. Let's look first of all at resistor 4. This was originally a 150 ohms and we've replaced this resistor with a 470 ohms. This does two things. The first thing it does is a plus, but the second thing it does could be considered a minus. Looking at this graph, the original 150 ohm resistor, which is shown in green here, rolls off quite considerably from quite a high frequency, starting at about 100 hertz. The, low, the lower one, that you can see in blue, it looks like it's further down the graph, simply because it, it's effectively giving more negative feedback. And the effect of that is it lowers the gain. That's could be considered a negative, <laughs> no pun intended. You will need to probably drive the amplifier with a preamp. Whereas, as it comes out of the box, you may or may not, it depends on what you're feeding this with. Now I'm feeding it from a low, the low impedance output from a DAC. And I find that the original model didn't need a preamp at all. Now it's been modified for, for most listening, it gets loud enough. Depending on, this is something I, I won't know because I don't know what you're going to connect this to. The chances are you will need a buffer or a preamp of some kind. We'll go into that in, a, in another video, why you would need a, a low impedance output preamp or a simple buffer. A buffer being mean, means that you don't have any gain, so it's purely impedance matching. But that's a subject for another video coming up in the near future. So if you look at this graph, it shows you two other 
values a resistor that you can change so if the ultimate your ultimate goal was not the best possible low frequency response bearing in mind it's not rubbish unmodified it's just something that you can do and basically what you're doing is putting in more negative feedback and anytime you put negative feedback in the gain drops um, it's just a fact of life the more negative feedback the lower the gain but the pluses are you generally have a flatter response and inherently lower distortion because you are giving negative feedback and negative feedback is known for lowering distortion I have to emphasize that it's not like chalk and cheese you're not going to listen to one version and think oh that's awful no bass it's quite subtle because we're talking about virtually subsonic bass this next graph shows you the overall frequency response again as um, simulated by the spice software it's including it shows you what it looks like with all the modifications that you should or you could have done now i do like to emphasize again that out of the box it's pretty good i mean it's not rubbish this board whatever you do but in conversation with ron and he has the, the ability to do these spice graphs um, we found that we could make it better not like chalk and cheese so don't think if you don't modify it it's going to sound awful because if you look at the previous videos i've made on it these were made prior to doing these modifications so i was already very impressed with it before looking at this graph again it looks like the ends of the spectrums roll off but if you look at the scale we're talking about half a db between divisions it's pretty good and it goes up to 100 kilohertz which is way outside the audio passband this is the result after all the modifications that we've done to this board and again just after this conversation i'm going to show you some real results um, these are after all simulations and this is what it should be in theory the question is will it be like this in practice so stay tuned as they say this is the usual setup oscilloscope to be used purely for viewing and confirming the frequency i'm actually using the meter we'll be looking at and i'll show you this in closer detail and it will be on the lo lower scale and on the db scale oscillator is down here for most of the tests we'll be looking at the meter apart from of course the square waves which you've got to see i'm going to use one kilohertz as is the norm for setting our naught db i'm not going to sweep it i will read out the frequencies when the meter starts to drop basically this is the low end now and this is 20 hertz and as you can see see it's still on naught db and going down from one kilohertz to this frequency the meter hasn't hasn't moved so i won't bore you with that so we'll now go down and this is 10 hertz and you can see it's about a quarter of a db down if we keep going we are now literally half a db down and that's seven hertz seven and if we continue to drop that's six hertz and a little bit less at five yes at five hertz we are one db down well we won't even bother with one kilohertz because that's flat so this is 10 kilohertz we're looking at now and you can see it's still flat 20 kilohertz still flat 
30 kilohertz still flat, 40 kilohertz, 50 kilohertz, and you can just see them, well, it's about, well, just off the flat scale. 60 kilohertz, much the same. 70 kilohertz, it's about quarter of a dB down. 80 kilohertz, much the same. 90 kilohertz, much the same. 100 kilohertz, we're now at 120 kilohertz, and if I can see this clearly, it's half a dB down. So not shabby. Shall we go down to 1 dB? I think we'll be in the RF band if we do, but we'll do it. All right, there's 1 dB, and that's 210 kilohertz at 1 dB down. Beat that if you can. Let's look at some square waves. Well, you may think this square wave doesn't look terribly spectacular, but if I tell you that's the square wave at 100 kilohertz, you should be grossly impressed. This is the square wave at 20 kilohertz. Again, not shabby, is it? 10 kilohertz. And the reference, 1 kilohertz. Just for giggles, we'll have a look at the 100 hertz square wave. Now this can often look pretty shabby on many amplifiers. This is what 100 hertz square waves looks like. Do you want to see a 10, 10 hertz square wave? I thought you would. Have a look at this. Not bad, is it? I mean, nobody would normally dare display a 10 hertz square wave. I mean, it's just ludicrous to do so. But that is excellent by anybody's standards. It's the best I've ever tested, to be honest, in, in, in my history of messing with audio amplifiers. These are the best square waves I've ever seen. Well, if those numbers don't impress you, then you might as well take up stamp collecting because I don't think you're going to find better than that. Just to whet your appetite, these are two separate little projects which I'm beginning to do some filming and testing on now. And these will be in follow-up videos in a couple of weeks, hopefully health permitting.